Good day, everybody. My name is Anita Human, and um, I'm a software developer, a technical writer, and uh, a fan of open source, and also a cat lover. And uh, today, I will be giving my I'll be giving a topic. I was speaking on the topic of uh, imposter syndrome in the workplace. And first off, let's define imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome you know, is an internal experience of believing that you are not as competent as others perceive you to be. And um, to put it simply, this is a, it's an experience of feeling like a fraud and then you're feeling as, as if you're not competent for that particular thing you're doing or you're not good enough to be in that particular situation that you're in. And this is just your insecurities coming right after you and um, you're subduing to them, I'll put it that way. And it happens to almost everyone, it's common, especially in the tech ecosystem, and everybody has one way or the other experienced imposter syndrome. It's not, it's not a, a you thing, it's a general thing. Everyone has one way or the other experienced it. And um, it's not constant, and some persons may feel um, confidence when giving uh, a presentation in front of their friends, but then when it has to like when you have to give the presentation in a, in, a, in a board meeting, they'll be scared and uh, feel like people in the board meeting would find out that yes, this person doesn't know what he's talking about or has no idea of the topic he's presenting on. And this is common because we all we often have to like face our doubts once or twice. And um, what causes imposter syndrome? This is um, caused as a result of a self-generated doubt when you keep telling yourself that you you can you not or you can't. When you keep telling yourself the, the negative words, you can't, you're not, you shouldn't, you will not. When your mind keeps telling you that you can't. And um, being criticized by colleagues in the workplace, when we have to like relate to people, and uh, somebody probably picks on a particular mistake you made, of course we we can admit to the fact that people are easy to criticize rather than appraise things in every scenario. So when we're being criticized, we actually want to like hide into our shells and uh, cut love somewhere and uh, think about it, and uh, having to ask for help. Some persons are so confident in themselves that they feel like once they have to ask for help from the next person then they're they're belittling themselves and then they reduce their self-worth and another is um self-comparison to a high achieving colleague when you feel like you're supposed to be at a particular level with somebody and other than a particular situ um, position that you find yourself in and you keep seeing that person as a competition to yourself and um, being a workaholic, some persons always want to do too much. You're a human being and you're not a robot. Always give yourself time to breathe and think things through. Take a break and um, take a chill pill. Also, perfectionists. Some persons always have this thing that if something is not done right, then they're not competent enough to actually deliver that particular product. Um, this are all the things that actually attribute to imposter syndrome and um there are different types of imposter syndrome and like the pie chat says everyone feels imposed like an imposter sometimes so it's okay to feel like an imposter once in a while it's just for you to learn how to deal with it yeah so the types of um imposter syndrome we have the perfectionists these are the um, people that are never satisfied and always feel that their work could be better and then um, just put in more effort. So rather than focus on their strengths, they tend to like fix so much, so much attention on um, their flaws and their imperfections rather than look forward to actually getting better. They, they bottle themselves up in what they were not able to accomplish. And um, another type is experts. And these are the individuals that are always trying to learn more they feel like there's no knowledge that is enough and uh, there's definitely somebody out there who knows more than they should that they do and so they have to like know more because 
if they don't know enough, then people actually see that they, they're not good enough. So they always want to like keep keep finding out things, keep learning and then exp expanding their knowledge. And um, the superheroes, this this is because these uh, individuals have to deal with the in in insecurities and feel inadequate. They always push themselves to do more than always set goals that are higher than the, the normal level of achievements. Okay, let me explain that. When you know that you, the level you're in right now, there's only an extent to which you can actually take a step. But then you, in your mind, you, you imagine that you can actually beat that level because yes, you have to achieve it. If not, then you're not this particular person or you are not able to prove to people that you're not this person. And um, the natural genius, and these are people who set excessively lofty goals for themselves and then they feel crushed when they're not able to actually meet up these goals. And then the soloists. And the soloists are people who always want to um, work on their own. They don't feel like people will able able to accomplish things the way they would so they always want to be on their own and then do things just all on their own because it helps them get the self-worth of putting effort into things and then achieving goals alone some of the common signs of a, an imposter syndrome of imposter syndrome you see are underestimating your competence and then your skills when you to know that you're actually going through experiencing imposter syndrome. Some of the common things you experience would be underestimating your competence and your skills. And then you begin to doubt your, yourself and feel like you're not good enough. And then you attribute your successes to external factors. That's when you start to say, you got here because of this particular thing. You were, you were lucky, if not, you wouldn't have been able to get to that particular point or level that you are in or if not for somebody that you talk to you wouldn't have been able to actually put up with a particular situation so you're not confident that it was all you're doing and then settling for very challenging goals like i said some persons always want to push so much hard on themselves always want to prove to themselves that they can actually do it and then feeling disappointed as oneself because you set so many goals and there's so much expectations at the end of the day you're not able to accomplish them you start feeling disappointed you feel like you, you never get anything right and then you're not doing anything so are some of the common signs of um, imposter syndrome and then you fear that you won't live up to your expectations you fear that what if tomorrow something happens and then um, you don't actually have everything what if paraventure could could something have go on right now we be able to meet this thing and that fear is always coming right after you and then you begin to experience burnout and then you want to like escape reality and then just be all on your own and some persons experience burnout in a way that they want to actually um segregate themselves from the crowd and um, be on their own just to deal with the imposter syndrome whereas other people want to relate to people just to keep on putting the attitude that yes i'm getting everything together and then some persons end up sabotaging their own success and where they they make it look like it couldn't be them it can't possibly be them that actually go to this particular point and you're bringing your own self down at the end of the day and um, how does imposter syndrome affect the workplace? I'm going to explain this particular one. It's a scenario that I, I actually I actually experienced sometime last year. So I have been contributing to this particular open source project for a while. And yeah, it's my favorite for, um, out of all because it's actually friendly and beginner um, relative. So, and um, at a point, I was assigned to help mentor the and onboard the new members of the community. And for somebody that is also new into open source, I I felt that was too much for me to handle. I feel like 
I'm, I'm too I'm too soon into this field to be given such a very big tax. What if people that I'm mentoring see that um, I actually don't know what I'm doing? What if they see that, okay, this person actually has no idea of what she's doing. She can actually just Now, I was so scared of actually being seen that I'm also as unaware of the topic as people are mentoring so <laughs> i had to like um, <laughs> avoid the project and for a period of one month i stopped attending meetings i stopped relating with that particular project and i stopped every activity that i was doing in that community until recently i got to understand what how imposter syndrome deals with people and i actually realized that that was me running away from my insecurities. That was me letting my insecurities get the best of me. And um, I couldn't see things like other people would because nobody would actually understand that, yes, this is what I was going through. Of this person stuff assumed, but, and I didn't have someone to share these things with. So I just had to keep it to myself. And if anyone asks, I'll say, I'm just busy. That's why I'm not contributing to this project. I'll come to meeting next week. I'll come to meeting next week. And at the end of the day, I did attend meeting for an entire one month. But um, recently, I picked up an issue and I'm getting on with it. So yes, that's my story. So how does imposter syndrome affect people in the workplace? Yes, it reduces productivity. Like in my case, for instance, I was affected by my insecurity so much that I couldn't make effort to contribute to that project for a period of one month. And this, imagine in a, in a workspace where every single person is experiencing this same thing as I was at the same time, it's definitely reduced the commitments from them, the members of the organization. And uh, also, it's yields. Uh, it does not yield innovative employees. This is because people are so drowned in the in the in the thoughts of them not good enough. In the thoughts of them not being good enough that um, they actually know they're not able to produce innovative ideas, and all they do is just carry on the regular activities, come to work fix a tax and then go off they're not able to actually bring up new ideas to the table in that particular organization that they may be in and also it reduces the well-being and the mental health of the staff because um someone who is going through imposter syndrome is definitely going to if it's not if it's not able to confront it and actually share these feelings with somebody at the end of the day it leads to um depression and the person is not able to actually perform as um, a normal person would and um, also it negatively impacts interpersonal relationship people are not able to com communicate with each other in the organization friendly or in a very very neutral manner because everyone is scared that the other person will find out something that they're hiding whereas this is just an insecurity eating them up and um, how do you deal with imposter syndrome in the workplace? First off, um, members of the, the HR team should be able to create a culture of inclusion in the workplace. You should always carry every single member of the organization along. See if they're going through, um, they're not communicating with um, other members of the organization properly, then there should be a, um, and improved communication among members. This is another way to help deal with imposter syndrome in the workplace and um, recognize people's achievements. If a member of um, an organization, if a member on a team actually makes uh, a commitment to over a period of time that is worth giving the person a congratulation or a praise for, then this, the person should actually be given that what's due to him because no matter how how little the, the appreciation may be to some persons it's actually a big deal and people actually take big minutes very little things um i'll also give an example in my scenario so while i was contributing to a project one time i made my first contribution that was my first technique um code related contribution to that project and 
the person that I got a response from, I least expected it. And this was president of the, the, um, the organization. So he was the person that actually sent me a congratulation mess email and said, congratulations on making your first contribution to this project. The joy I felt in me, <laughs> it was it was unexplainable. I was I was so excited because I, I felt like okay, this person actually appreciate this little thing that I did. I actually want to contribute again in case they tell me congratulations in the next one. And I was so excited and I always I always want to keep contributing because of that simple appreciation that I received. And also you should educate and inform to help people reframe their beliefs. You should always communicate um, communicate with the members of the employees of the organization, inform them that they're not the only ones going through this thing. Like every single person encounters this and it's normal to always share um, these feelings with somebody if you are going through them. You should always open up and share with somebody. And also you should help connect with them, their internal motivators you should also relate to them in a way that will make them want to open up the things that made them started in the first place make them realize that okay why did i start this thing why did i apply for this job in the first place why am i in this position in the first place they will not start to ask themselves these questions so you should always relate to people in a way that they will be able to understand and see find the reasons why they are in that particular position they're in. This might help them also deal with imposter syndrome. Also, you should pay and um, reward the employees. And uh, if someone is due for promotion, then the person should be given the promotion because these are the little things that will play a big impact in people's lives. And um, if people are due for their salaries by the end of the month, then they should be given their their payments as due to them also support employees well-being also always look out for the members of um, the community or the organization there should be a team that's always looking out for people's well-being because most persons who are not able to actually experience their feelings and are scared to actually have asked for help from people there's any problems that they're going through they end up going to the extent of being depressed and um, this affects their mental and also physical well-being. So there should always be a team that is looking out for the well-being of um, the members of a community. And then how to deal with imposter syndrome personally, how to start telling yourself that you, they will soon find out how great you are rather than they not they will soon find out that i am not that great so you should always take out the not that from every situation so let's find out how you can overcome imposter syndrome on your own as a person and first you have to stop comparing yourself to others do you understand that people people vary people's um people's skills and the um, level of commitment vary so like my mom would always say all fingers are not equal so the level and the position you're in has a big role to play in your life so you should you should not always see somebody as a competition and um, always be on your lane doing your own thing and another way is um to open up to somebody if you feel if you're beginning to feel like you're not good enough if you start doubting yourself to the extent that you can actually make any effort towards things that you used to do, then you should be able to open up to somebody because at the point where you start telling somebody what you're going through or the pains you might be experiencing, the thoughts that might be going through your head, it actually makes you feel better and um, reduces the problems to an extent because you feel like someone is able to relate to the particular problem that you're going through at that point in time and then you should move at your own pace don't always put too much pressure on yourself it's you know how much your brain can take you know how much you're able to actually handle that it's not going to weigh you down and get you sick move at your own pace do what you can actually handle at that particular time 
Because when you put so much pressure on yourself, it not only disturbs your mental health, but also your physical health. And at the end of the day, you will actually be able to achieve the goals because you already spent the cognitive resources on on doing everything at the same time to so take things step by step one step at a time so that you'll be able to actually deal with every of the the goals or the tasks that you're as assigned to and also you should use social media moderately and yes we all know that social media sometimes can lead a lot of persons to uh imposter syndrome because we are always looking out to people's accomplishment and not actually the processes. People always post the the end results of what they're going through and not the, the process how they got to that particular point. A lot of persons get carried away by these success stories and do not actually put in the thoughts to actually imagine the work that those people have put in to get to that particular point. Also, another way to get rid of um, imposter syndrome or deal with imposter syndrome is to befriend the insecurities. Now, you have to sit down and think, okay, accept that, yes, you, you might not be good enough, but you're going to try accepting, own up to your, your doubts and um, open up to yourself. And at the point where you start admitting that, yes, you're not good enough, but you can try, and or you're not... You're not the best but you're able to you can you're, you can actually make effort to achieve that thing then you start helping yourself to get out of um, the imposter syndrome also you should talk to a mentor if you have somebody who is more experienced in a particular field that you find yourself than you are then you should be able to talk to the person tell the person the particular problems that you're going through your encounters at that particular point and you realize that even your mentor was actually a victim of this same feeling at some point or might even be going through the same thing but then when once you're able to share these feelings with your mentor you know that okay i have somebody who is um, right next to me that has gone through this thing i'm not the only one and you'll be able to get over it sooner than expected and also you should assess your abilities because you're doubting what you can actually do because you you're not seeing how much potential you have you have to remind yourself that yes this is what you do so you could take some persons assess their um, abilities by writing down what they can actually do what they've achieved and what they've not the targets hours. they've met and how how far they've gone so far what they can actually do and then by the time you actually sit down and look at the things that you've done on your own you'll be able to actually see that you're not so much of a failure after all because you you've come this far so if you've come this far you can actually go further and then you're not an imposter and also you set reasonable expectations for yourself do not set expectations that are unrealistic something that you know that even if that period of time comes to you not be able to meet up because these are the things that actually lead you to being disappointed at the end of the day just keep an open mind and put in efforts but do not put in do not set goals that are unrealistic and on un, unachievable within short periods of time these are most of the things that actually leads to imposter syndrome and um yes and that comes to the conclusion of my talk and i just want to tell everyone that we're all or we all are experiencing or have experienced imposter syndrome one way or the other and if you're actually going through it just like i dealt with mine i'm telling you that you'll be able to get over them just try and see that you're actually better than you are that you think you are and um no one is judging you no one is criticizing you because everybody actually feels as bad about themselves as you do so you should try and open up to somebody if you're feeling like an imposter or a fraud thank you very much for listening and um you can connect via twitter or github at um, anita e human thank you